And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Bunny? Yes. Bunny, are you there? Yeah. I'm having a problem. I can't see. I can't see nothing. Bunny! You're gonna have to cut me. Cut All me, buddy. Right. All right. This is gonna hurt, kid. You cut. Ah, there you go. Color change, and uh, actually, Eleanor, can I borrow your spoon? Because the color's a little bit off here. Big white spoon, and yeah, that is actually a little bit better. There you go. Hooray! I'm better. I've been cut. Okay. <laughs> it's time, Bunny! It is time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, who is more than brother to me, I embrace thee. Because it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to casually amble our way into the final half of our big shoe. And it is said final half wherein we finally eventually get around to discussing our all new low fat high fiber zero calories high fiber non gmo extra strength so much fiber money like for real yeah. so much fiber like once we start talking about the movie you'll basically be a human version of the golden corral chocolate fountain yeah that's how much fiber is in this. I mean, I've been shitting this whole time. Which is why we do not do smell o vision like some of those other podcasts out there. We do. The technology is out there. Yeah. Fun fact, my brother, my brother and me sells, smells like candlewood and cotton candy. The technology is out there. So anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah. We were doing Rocky... And Rocky 2! Okay, so, uh, for those of you just joining us, where the hell were you <laughs> when I needed you? So, every summer, we do a theme that we do throughout the summer. Quick roundup, summer of Star Wars, summer of Saw, summer of... Uh, Fasting and Furious thing? No, Summer of Fred Willard. Uh, rest in peace. The Summer of Bottoming, where we did the bottom 100 worst movies of all time. Uh, I love Guy Ritchie's Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. I love Guy Ritchie's uh, Snatch. And The Gentleman is a absolutely wonderful movie that I am obsessed with. Uh, uh, Cumberland Gap is a devil of a gap. White Widow Super Cheese. But uh, the movie he did with Madonna is the worst movie, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, of all time. Uh, then we took a hiatus for personal reasons, and Bunny said, take as much time as you want. And I said, okay, wait, I just came up with our summer. And we did the summer of COVID exploitation. COVID exploitation, copyright 2002 on Dead Cow Studios in the Church of Ed Wood. And now our sixth summer, the summer of Yo. Possibly one of the hardest challenges we have ever had for the podcast. I legit pulled up the script for Rocky 2. Yeah. I, 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 there were, a, I, as far as my notes, there were a bunch in Rocky, not as many in Rocky 2, but I'm not sure. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. This is hard. Yeah. This is very hard. Uh, personally, I'm excited about this summer because real talk, I only ever saw the first five Rocky movies. Yeah. I never saw Rocky Balboa or Creed or Creed 2 or Creed 3. So I'm excited for the back half of this movie. I'm excited to see uh, Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan take the Rocky franchise and give it new life and give it a, a fresh perspective of, of black perspective and take it to new places yeah and uh 
I hate five. I hated five so bad that I just gave up on the Rocky series, period. Yeah. Uh, but when I was growing up, and Bunny, I think that you'll relate to this. We are of a certain age, a certain generation, a certain demographic where that Bill Conti Rocky music starts playing and you just want to hit a punching bag. <laughs> yeah. You know, that that music starts playing and it just pumps you up. My kids don't know who Rocky is. My kids don't know Yo, Adrian. My kids don't know Patty Duke, Donna Reed. My kids don't know who Gilligan is. Yeah. My kids know that Fonzie is cool, but that's more of a Pulp Fiction reference than... Uh, it, no offense to Henry Winkler, he is a very yeah. nice man. Um, so, Rocky. Here are some fun facts about the movie Rocky. You know what the original working title of this film was, Bunny? What? Blue Harvest. And also, the lead character, Rocky Balboa, was originally going to be named Luke Starkiller. Oh, Interesting, right? And Chewbacca was based on the director's dog. Yeah. How neat is that? This movie has been discussed to death, and so I don't want to just go on IMDb and read selections from Rocky's trivia page, but I will say this. There is a bit of a controversy as to whether the turtles are still alive. Okay. Sylvester Stallone as everyone knows, the star of Death Race 2000 and the leader of the Ravagers, he, he made a post where he said, hey, I've still got the turtles. Cuff right. and Link, here they are from the original movie Rocky, and they're still alive. He posted in 2019 his big, huge turtles that are still alive. And, and so that became like this meme, and oh my god, Sylvester Stallone still has the turtles. The turtles are still alive. So if you look up Sylvester Stallone's turtles or Rocky's turtles, you'll find that picture from Stallone's uh, Instagram page and him smiling and the turtles behind him. And it's all cute. Yada, yada, yada. But if you keep scrolling, you'll find the Snopes page where they're like, first off, these turtles only live uh, usually 40 years. Yeah. Number two, we have talked to people on set that weren't Sylvester Stallone that said, yeah, uh, he doesn't have the turtles. Yeah. So it's a bit confusing as to whether or not he officially does have them. So who knows? Uh -huh. uh, I, I, but, I did not realize there was a, a turtle conspiracy going on. There is. Yeah. There is. There is a turtle conspiracy in regards to Rocky. Yeah. I honestly think that the first Rocky film, um, the score is incredible. I love that Bill Conti music, gonna fly now, running up the steps, montages, so many montages. Uh, it, it's a good film and I like it, but also I think that the popularity of Rocky and the Rocky franchise as a whole a lot of it rests on the fact that the making of the film was as much a rags to riches story as the plot of Rocky. Yes. Because Sylvester Stallone was a broke ass palooka. Yeah. And he was trying to uh, shop this script around. He had a hundred dollars in the bank and that was all the money he had. And he was thinking about getting rid of his dog because he couldn't afford to feed it. That dog is Bupkis in this movie. Uh -huh. In these movies. That was his dog that he couldn't afford to feed. So it, when you see Rocky go from a no one to a somebody, that's also the story of Sylvester Stallone, the actor that nobody cared about, who was in a porn, who was in Death Race 2000, yeah. uh, who somehow made an underdog movie and was an underdog himself. And was and ended up winning Best Picture. It's basically that guy from Boondock Saints, except he was successful. Yeah, and he wasn't a dick. Yeah. So, uh, 
I think a large portion of the success of Rocky relies on that. And, and here's the thing, too. This is how I feel about the Rocky movies. I'll be like, oh, this movie sucks. This movie sucks. This movie sucks. Okay, he's training. Okay, he's giving up. Okay. Okay, he's training again. Yeah. I like this song. Okay. Okay, here's the big fight. These movies are sports Godzilla films. Yeah. Yeah. I had a breakthrough this afternoon. That is pretty good. Like, I, okay, I, I got you. Yeah. Go. Here's the drama. Here's the romance. Here's the drama. Ooh, there's fighting. Okay. Here's the drama. Here's the drama. Here's the big fight. And then you liked the big fight so much, you don't pay attention to the fact that the other hour and 20 minutes of the movie you didn't particularly like because the fights are that friggin' good. <laughs> that you forget that, like, oh, yeah, I was kind of yawning through the rest of Rocky too. But then you get to that fight, and it's like, fuck, you got me. You got me. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So we're doing Rocky and Rocky 2 today. Rocky. And, and unrealistic, you know, unrealistic to, like, actual boxing matches at the time. You know, yeah. you would, you would yeah. never see real fighters hit each other that many times. No, you, know? you absolutely would not. You absolutely would not. A lot more dancing. And Rocky never covers his face. Yeah, I know. Ever. He's just like, he's he's going head first. He, he put your fucking fists up. <laughs> Even I know that. He's just letting people hit him. Stop! I don't like that. Oh, okay, so Rocky, the first film, it came out in 1976. This film is based on Walt, on the Walter Tevis novel of the same name and stars David Bowie as Thomas Jerome Newton, the alien who, as the title suggests, fell to Earth. And shit, I may have seen the wrong film. It, the Man Who Fell to Earth also came out in 1976. Oh. I'm going to be doing this every time we do a Rocky film, so get used to it. Uh, so, what did I do? I messed up the computer. Okay. So, Rocky won. It's off. He's a schlub. I have seen ECW matches in high school auditoriums that had more of an audience than the first fight that Rocky has. Yeah. And also, I feel like I feel like Rocky de-ages in this film. In these in this franchise. He goes from a pretty old out of shape schlub to super young too crazy old in this film he seems so washed up so much older yeah he seems older in rocky one and rocky two than he does in rocky three and rocky four does that make sense he's benjamin buttoning he's yeah, yeah, yeah 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 well yeah after the plastic surgery after the plastic surgery, yeah. So, um, Burgess Meredith is in this? The yes. Penguin? I love oh, that. I love he, that. Was, he was just one of those guys who was in everything while he yeah. was alive. Fucking, you never I, knew where he was going to be. He was Waldo. He was Waldo. He was Waldo. Yeah. Um... I grew up loving Rocky 3 and 4. Uh, real talk. I watched Rocky 1 a couple of times because it was always on TV. You know, in the 80s, the Rocky movies were always on TV. And I, I liked the first one. I loved the second one soundtrack as a child. And so when it played on TV, this is embarrassingly true. I had a Fisher-Price tape 
cassette tape player and I recorded the entire movie onto two cassettes and would listen to the movie Rocky and Rocky 2. Yeah. So I can listen to the music and the dialogue. It really bizarre thing, but especially the second Rocky movie, I grew up listening to that like it was a song. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And that was a that was a, a memory that I had forgotten until Rocky II started and I didn't recognize any of the visuals except for the except for the uh the the caveman commercial, but I 100% knew all of the sounds. Yeah. So so yeah, I, I grew up listening to Rocky and Rocky II. And I had them on cassette, which is really weird, but um so Bonnie we're gonna start a well, do-up group around the, the trash same can, thing right? With earlier movies, you know, I I had Frankenstein on cassette, you know, yeah. that I recorded it off a of TV. A few other oh, things. Oh well, that makes me feel better. I thought it was yeah. just me. No, I might have had Young Frankenstein. I might have had Monty Python, the Holy Grail, as well. I had a few of them. I just I'm old. I don't remember that far back anymore. That's awesome. That makes me feel better. <laughs> that makes me feel better. My mind was blown when I learned that when he says follow Bruja, that Bruja means glue. Yeah. That's such a joke. I, I, I had heard that joke 30 times until I finally got that joke. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's awesome. So we are starting a doo-wop group around a burning trash can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm down with that. I don't know what we're going to call ourselves. Let's just workshop. Let's just uh, uh, spitball some ideas. Um, uh, Carlos and the Guido. And the Guidos. Um, okay. The Fancy Lads. Okay. Um, top Hat and Tranny. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. Um... So that's, that's kind of like right there on the nose. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bunny, I've got a question for you. It, would Rocky be considered a palooka? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, okay, so he's a palooka. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. It's tough to count the yos because it's so hard to understand what the hell these people are saying. Yeah, it is so difficult. A hundred percent of the time, I don't understand what they're saying. Seventy percent of the time, it works all the time. <laughs> I like, but one thing that I do like is Rocky's Big Brother Big Palooka program, where he takes young kids off the street and teaches them not to be whores. Yeah. Who have yeah. no respect. You know why he does that? Because Rocky is Italian Gamera. Rocky Balboa is friend to all children. Yes. This Just like Gamera. Rocky Balboa is really neat. Rocky Balboa is full of meat. And he punches meat, so it works. My hair yeah. looks amazing right now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um... This movie looks like it was either filmed in Philadelphia or Belfast during the Troubles. The Troubles. Yeah. As it's called. You ever seen the movie Belfast? I saw it and I thought it was pretty good. I, uh... It took me a while to realize that the father of the family who is the center of the drama was the love interest from Barb and Star. Really? Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, How? Polly's Polly is a piece of shit. Yeah. I hate him. I have always hated him. He can rot in hell for all I care. Yeah. I hate that man. I hate him. Uh, I hope his 80s robot comes to life and kills him. 
Also, their big date. Okay, so this is how it worked. So they have their big date and the ice rink, and then he takes her back to his house, and she's nervous to kiss him, but eventually they do kiss. Um, apparently, behind the scenes sort of stuff, she had the flu when she yeah. filmed that scene. And so when she is nervous to kiss him, she is legitimately nervous as Talia Shire to kiss Sylvester Stallone because she didn't want to get him sick on the set of his big movie. But seeing it in 1976 is probably really sweet. Seeing it in 2023 kind of looks like Rocky's forcing himself onto a shy woman. Yes, it does, doesn't it? It does, and it's creepy. Yeah. It's kind of like those stories that you hear your grandpa say. Oh, how did your grandma and I get together? Well, she said no to me so many times, and I just pestered her and followed her and stalked her until finally she said yes. Yeah. She didn't want to kiss me, so I forced her to. You know, that sort of thing. That's what this feels like. Where it's like, yeah, at the time it was fine. Now, though, in our modern lens, it kind of looks like you forced yourself onto Adrian. Yeah. So I don't like that. I hate it. It gives me the willies. Bill Conti is one of the greatest uh, composers in the world of sad Bruce Banner walking down a street music. Yes. Except in this movie, it's for an Italian guy who's a schlub. A schlub. I think that would be a good term. Rocky in the first film, and for most of the second film, is a schlub. He's very schlubby. Well, I don't know. What was the other word before? A palooka. A palooka. Yeah, see, see, a palooka also implies both a fighter and a mob enforcer to me. Thank you for bringing this up. My favorite character in these first two Rocky movies is the uh, lone shark mob guy who is repeatedly shown to be a nice guy for whom there's nothing wrong. Yeah. And it's like, hey, hey, yo, Rock, come over here. Yeah. I'm a mob guy. Maybe I've killed people. I've definitely broken some legs, broken a few thumbs. But I also have a heart of gold. Here's $500. I'm a good guy. Yeah. And, and he's never shown to be, to really be bad. Yeah. But we know he's bad because he's the bad guy, mob enforcer, whatever. But he has a heart of gold. He never does anything bad except he tries to con Rocky into giving money for condominiums. But besides that, there's nothing wrong with him. He's such a nice dude. Organized crime is awesome. Yes. That's what I've learned from these movies. Organized crime, A-OK. Well, but if you think about it, aren't you going to want to be extra nice to the guys who you know for a fact can beat the living fuck out of you. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I like seeing Rocky nice. put on glasses. I like seeing Rocky put on glasses. But you know what I don't like? Um, I don't want, like, Bunny and I to be together. And we're really close. And Bunny says, take off the glasses. You look beautiful. Bitch, I need these to see. Yeah, baby. I need to have these glasses on so I can fucking look at things. Yeah. Don't take off my glasses. Talia Shire takes off her glasses. You never see her glasses again. Either she got contacts or she's just freaking Mrs. Magoo. Yes. Her. I don't wear my glasses at home. Oh, well, Talia Shire's overall look throughout the movie, she definitely improved. She got a glow up. Huh? She got a glow up. She She got a glow up. up. (laughs) She's got got the Raz. That's short for 
razzmatazz. She's got the razz. But that freaking Bill Conti gonna fly now starts playing, and it's like, oh, that does something to me on a molecular level. Yeah. It, 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 and it's not something that the modern generation in Gen Z and, and Mal or Max or Eleanor get, but that music starts playing and damn, I want to go to the gym. That first knockout makes me want to cheer. Yeah. That first knockout makes me want to cheer. I remember seeing Star Wars in, in theaters pre uh, special editions. I yeah. remember. Han Solo coming back and screaming Yahoo and the entire the entire theater cheers for like a minute. Yeah. And that's how I feel when Rocky first knocks out Apollo Creed and it's the first time he's knocked down and it's like fucking I, I don't like this movie but also damn it you got me fucking good on you yeah. Rocky. And I, I, I hate that this movie does such a good job of getting me like that. Well, yeah, it, it, it's all like, it's it's uh, it's beautifully scripted. Like, what can you say? It's like, like even the boxing sequences are playing out a narrative that's going on. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, Where Rocky is it, trying to prove himself to everybody. And the end, the end fight is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's, it is cinema. Yeah. At its purest form. And it's, I love it. It's amazing. I love all of the fights in Rocky 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Five can fuck off and I never saw any of the other ones. Yeah. But the fights are great. Even when suddenly Rocky's in Russia ending the Cold War. There's still some good fights in there. I I hate I did not like Rocky 2. I you liked didn't like Rocky, Rocky a lot. I didn't like Rocky 2. Or, or or as it's called in Spanish, Rocky 2. A lot of Rocky 2 <laughs> felt very contrived to me. You know, oh, 10 minutes. I like the fact, okay. I like the fact that Rocky in Rocky 2, it's like, hey, I won the fight, and now I've got the smallest amount of money. Time to MC Hammer my life. And then he quickly MC Hammers himself. Yeah. And is back to being a schlub. Yeah. Uh, That's basically but, it. Yeah. But before we end Rocky 1, there is a scene that got me. Yeah. Because I thought, and I mentioned this in the monologue, I thought that, that, you know, I got chosen to perform at Pride, and so I assumed that they would put me on some secondary stage in the corner over by the, like, vendor booths. But no, I'm on the main stage in front of everybody, and I found a picture of, like, what does that stage look like? And I found a picture of the stage, and it's huge, and it's massive, and it's just so overwhelming and i said i'm not going to focus on that i'm going to focus on the podcast on what's coming up uh, first i'm going to focus on the podcast and i watch rocky and the night before the fight he goes to the empty arena and he sees the massive amount of seats and the ring and the posters and all of that and he's scared and i felt that yeah so hard and so it, it really does feel like uh, doing the Rocky movies this summer are going to help me because I do feel like an underdog. And the end fight is just amazing, wonderful. It's perfect cinema. How many yo's did you count in the first Rocky movie, Bunny? Uh, we were counting together. Uh, yeah. And I have, we have that at 19 yo's. Okay, that's pretty good. I have 18. I'm going to okay. uh, uh, I'm gonna go with your number. 19. 19 yo's in Rocky. The first yo happens 12 minutes and 8 seconds. A guy on the dock goes, yo, rock! And, and there were a lot of yo's in the first Rocky. Yes. 
There were a lot. Yes, Eleanor? You have $200? Wow, let me see. Wow, and it and it's really rubbery. And it says, e-wealth making your financial life easier on the back. Wow, you are so rich, man. It's all about the Benjamins for you. So let's move on to Rocky II. You will? Okay, I, I lost track of the yo's, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, uh, Rocky II came out in 1979. This film is great. It's hilarious. It was directed by Carl Reiner. And, of course, it stars the legendary Steve Martin as Mavis Johnson. Oh, no! Someone hates these cans! Shit, I saw the wrong movie again. <laughs> Kudos to, to Sylvester Stallone. He wrote the first six movies, he, and he directed Rocky's 2, 3, 4, and 6. Good for you. When you yeah. see these Rocky movies, you think, oh, yeah, these Rocky movies are good. But it's like, dude, oftentimes he's writing and producing and directing and starring. Only two other people did that. Orson Welles and Ed Wood. Yeah. Don't, it, it, my computer is a touch screen, so don't touch the screen. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Eleanor. But kudos to, and also, uh, Sylvester Stallone is, has his hand in so many things. He even wrote the novelization for Rocky II. Really? And it's fascinating because when Rocky is telling the story, it's in first-person Rocky perspective, and it's written in the broken English of Rocky Balboa, but when it's uh, talking about what's happening to Apollo Creed, it's in perfect English. Yeah. But then it'll be perfect English talking about uh, Apollo Creed not smiling for the entire film. And then it goes back to, so I was back at the docks with uh, Jimmy the Snake. Uh, yo, yo, yo. So it, it's really interesting. So he's he he wrote Rocky II. He directed Rocky II. He starred in Rocky II. Uh, and he wrote the novelization for Rocky II. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't uh, write the theme music. Okay, should we restart if we cut? Yes. Okay, absolutely. It like we were done. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, we we should we should restart because because we still have a. I don't think I can get through Rocky two in four minutes and forty seconds. Okay, we did not run the. Zoom reload thingy I have. Where is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut to okay. that, cut the feed, and re-invite you. Okay. Cool. Right. We will be right back with more of the Popon film after this. Certified frustration-free packaging. Hmm. Not... Not frustrating. That's good. I guess I just pull here and uh, damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Kate, okay. no!
And we're back. And we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. 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 Rocky 2, 1979. Rocky 1 came out in 1976. It won Best Picture despite its use of the word yo 19 times. Rocky 2 came out in 1979. Almost made as much money as the first one. Good on you, mate. It was released by United Artists, a trans America con- company. Wow, way to be an ally. I had no yeah. idea that Rocky was uh, the first two Rockies were released by a trans company. Good for you. I like how the movie, how the movies always start with previously on Rocky. Yeah. I like that. The opening credits are previously on. Uh, condominiums. I never use them. It's a dumb <laughs> joke that I yes. love. It's a dumb joke. That I enjoy. The commercial scene is heartbreaking to me. Yeah. Where he's uh, working on the commercial. I do like the fact, I really like the fact that uh, during one of the pressers for uh, in Rocky 2, Rocky Balboa mentions, like, what are you going to do with your money? Oh, I want to buy hats. I want to buy uh, some Muppet toys, like a Cookie Monster, and uh, what's the green guy's name? Kermit. Because uh, after Rocky II, he was a guest star on the Muppet Show. Yeah. So that, and then you see a clip of him hosting the Muppet Show in the opening credits to Rocky Three. So it all fits, and I really like that. Uh, here's an odd fact: the meat foreman. He's only in like three scenes. Okay. But he's the the big, yes. tall, black meat foreman guy. He was a former NFL player named Frank McRae, who was also the truck driver that helped Fred Savage and the redhead from that uh, one band and the autistic brother get to California in the movie The Wizard. Oh, I, I don't know him from there. I know him from other that, places, that, though. Yeah, he's been in a bajillion things. I saw his list. It's incredible. He died recently in 2021, which was sad. Also, oh. um, one of the actors that I love in, in these Rocky movies that I always that I always like, that I've never hated, that I always appreciate, is fucking Apollo Creed's manager. Yeah. He was an actual boxer. And so he brings a level of realism to the movie. He was a legitimate professional boxer. Yeah. And I appreciate that. He's a good actor, and I think it's because he's not acting. Yeah. I forgot Brent Musburger existed. Holy shit, you see that face and you hear that voice and you're like, holy crap, yeah, you were a thing. I I know the name was a thing. I'm not, I can't picture I can't place what he who he was. He uh he, at he, all. he was it, I don't know if I remember Brent Musburger or if I remember like Kevin Nealon portraying Brent Musburger on SNL. Okay. That sort of a thing. Do I do I uh, remember Howard Cosell or do I remember talk show hosts doing Howard Cosell at Pratchett? Yeah. That sort of a thing. Uh, and, and just like in the first film, when Rocky finally knocks out Apollo Creed and it makes me want to cheer... Uh, freaking Mickey showing up at the door. I think we ought to knock his block off. Hell yeah! I get. Yeah. Su- I got surprisingly into Rocky too. Yeah, I got surprisingly into it. Uh, eat light. You're gonna eat lightning and crap thunder. Yeah, Rocky. I have IBS as well. Yeah. 
I also have irritable bowel syndrome. If yes. you go to Outback Steakhouse, they have a special gluten-free menu that's surprisingly tasty. <laughs> the scene the scene where the kids are running with Rocky gets me all choked up. And I know it's yeah. stupid. Dumb, but it, the film just uses does such a good job with the with the the, the you know, what's the word? The montages and the music of getting you riled up. Even when the movie is okay, that scene of Rocky running up the steps and the kids following him, it just gets me. It gets yeah. me. Also, Rocky is a friend to all children. Rocky is Gamera. Yes. He is 100% Gamera. These movies all kind of suck, but, but damn it. These movies are Godzilla films for sports. <laughs> okay. And I nailed it. I nailed that description. I, You're just, oh, uh, drama, so. drama, drama, fight, drama, drama, fight, end of film. And when you look back at whether you like the film or not, you just remember the fights. Yeah. And that's it. Just like Godzilla films. Like when I think of Godzilla and the invasion of the Astro Monsters, my first thought isn't Nick Adams. Yeah, no. When I think of King Kong versus Godzilla, my first thought is it the company head whose name is Taco. Yeah. I think of the monsters. I think of the fights. I think of that. I don't think of the human drama element. Yeah. But that's what these movies are. The fights are amazing. The rest of it is fine. But I didn't want to focus. I, I wanted to do Rocky and Rocky 2 together because I felt that we could do a solo episode just on the first Rocky, but I didn't think that Rocky 2 was strong enough for us to do a whole episode just on it. Yeah. You know? So I thought, okay, Rocky 1 and 2 can be together because Rocky 2 starts off right where Rocky 1 left off. That is one thing that pisses me off, that Rocky 1 ended with, there's not going to be no rematch. There ain't going to be no rematch. And then two minutes later, Balboa, when are you going to give me a rematch? And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's just bad writing. But, you know, whatever. I think that it sucks that he did take her to the zoo. Yeah, why? What did I miss Because there? at the beginning, they were using the R word, saying, oh, R's love the zoo. The driver of uh, the mafia guy. Oh. You should take her to the zoo. R words love the zoo. Hey, you take that back. Oh. And then, and then Rocky II starts, uh, uh, yo, Adrian, we should go to the zoo. Why do you want to take me to the zoo? Uh, it's nice. It's fine. No reason. No particular reason. No, it's, it, it's because of the R word. Yeah. That upsets me, but uh, I was thinking of Rocky. I got a hold of my pastor. I, I, I go to an Episcopalian church every Sunday, and I went to my pastor, and I asked him if, uh, hey, so I've got this big story time coming up. Will you be in town? Because I'd like to uh, drive over to your house and just yell at your window until you pop up and give me a blessing like in Rocky 2. <laughs> but he'll be out of the country. Oh. So he can't be uh, Father Carmine <laughs> before my story time. But uh, I like these movies. They're cute. I, I would yeah. rather see the Rocky movies than the freaking Fast and the Furious movies. <laughs> they are dumb and stupid and loud and a bunch of action sequences and a bunch of egos. And The yeah. Rock can only be hit so many times in a movie and can only hit someone so many times in a movie. And there's all this drama between actors in the movies. And um, also, no one wants to talk about it. And you don't hear anyone talking about it. But Paul Walker, who is now dead, when he was alive, he liked underage girls. That's not a QAnon thing. That's not a far-right conspiracy theory. Hillary Clinton eats 
babies in a tunnel thing. It is a 100% verifiable fact that Paul Walker liked underage girls, but no one talks about it because they liked him starring in the Vroom Vroom car movie. That's a fact. So I'd rather watch the Rocky series than freaking Fast and the Furious. I don't know yeah. what. I, one of the things that I thought of doing this summer was uh, uh, a couple of things. The summer of low budget shark movies. So not Jaws, maybe Jaws 2. Definitely Jaws 3 and Jaws the Revenge. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, uh, Ouija Shark. Uh, what? Laser Shark, Vampire Shark, you know, so many low-budget shark films out there. Amity Shark. And then I thought, oh, what if we do the Summer of Amity? Okay. But, but so many of those are shitty. So then I thought, the Summer of Live, where we watch nothing but movies uh, that were based that came from Saturday Night Live. And the reason why we didn't do that is, number one, I love you too much, Bunny. <laughs> and number two, I hate watching uh, SNL movies around my family because I hate watching, like, Wayne's World or the Blues Brothers or uh, Stuart Saves the World or whatever, and then having to go to my kids and say, look, this was popular back then. Yeah, and they and they just don't get it. But also, I don't think that as a trans woman, I can do its packed. Yeah, that pisses me off. And I don't think if we did an episode where I had to talk about the movie its packed, then it would basically be a whole episode of me screaming. Really. The entire joke to its pad was, are you a man or a woman? Let's stretch this out to two hours. That's the whole movie. I, I, I can't watch that at all. Yeah. Fuck, fuck its pad. Uh, so we're doing the summer of Rocky. Okay, we're at the end of Rocky 2. Bunny, how many yo's did you count? I counted a lot less. I had 13. Yes, that's exactly the number that I got. All right. It, okay, good. Yes, so 19 plus 13, that's at least 20. Uh, uh, 32. We're at 32. Yo, it's been only two movies and we're, we're at 32. Yeah. Wow. We've got... Uh, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5, Rocky Balboa, Creed, Creed 2... We have seven movies left. Yeah. And we're already at 32. Holy crap. This is going to be hard. Uh, but we're doing this. I have faith in us, Bunny. Yeah. I have faith in our ability to successfully succeed and count all the yos in the Rocky films. Okay. That is all I have for the Rocky, for Rocky 1 and 2. Uh, I I hate the fact that uh, the head of the singers in all of these movies is Frank Stallone. I hate having to remember that Frank Stallone exists. Yeah. It hurts me. Yeah, having yeah. Having to Frank see Frank Stallone. Stallone. You're going to go buy flowers. Okay. Okay. Be careful. Are you good, Jeannie? Hi, Jeannie. Hi. Bye, Jeannie. Hi. I'm going to be on the main stage. I know. Look, see, here's my glasses. I wear glasses. Oh, where'd you go? Oh. Uh, oh. Hold on. I'm watching it on Twitch, but there's a bit of a lag, so I haven't seen anything yet. Oh. So, what? Well, here we go. Uh, Hi. One moment, one moment, one moment, one moment, one yeah. moment, one moment, 
One moment. Okay. I just keep seeing I just keep seeing Bunny <laughs> and his top hat. Glasses! Oh, there you go. That was some award winning podcasting. We're so good at this. Don't uh, don't don't let the pigeon drive the bus, okay? I won't. Good. I won't. I use the book as like a as like a basis yeah. where it's where where I, I don't read it 100 percent perfect, but I just use it as like a character. So so the pigeon just goes, phew, I thought he would never leave. Now it's just you and us, you, the audience, me, the pigeon. How you guys doing? You're looking good. You're looking healthy. You're looking well rested. Have you lost weight? Can I drive the bus? <laughs> and and just uh. My cousin Herb drives the bus every day. He's the head bus driver in Guatemala, in the capital of Guatemala, which I'm assuming is Guatemala City. All right, love you. Bye. Bye, Jeannie. So that's it for the show this week. Uh, next week, I pity the fool who doesn't listen to our next episode. Yes. Because in the next episode is the one where Rocky becomes black. Yes. <laughs> it, it's the one where they make Apollo Creed into a good guy. The one with Mr. T. I love this one. I think it's really good. Uh, I I saw this one in theaters. I saw Rocky 3 and 4 and 5 in theaters. I, I, I have vivid memories of it. There's something about... There's something about Rocky Three, where where I don't think it's good. I don't think it's a good movie. I think it just plays on trope after trope after trope built out. Anyway, but there's you know, something about it that that makes me watch it over and over again. See. Rocky three, I have. I don't need to download that one. Okay. Uh, so are you saying that in the next episode we're not going to be running side by side on the beach in short shorts? That that's what I was looking forward to. Was you and I running I don't on the think beach that's, together that's in short shorts? Something we can ever actually ever rule out, can we? Uh, yeah. No. No, I we mean, can't like, rule it out. We can't ever rule it out. And I think it's fascinating that, like, I, I guess, you know, when I think of Rocky, I think of Eye of the Tiger, but it's fascinating that, like, you have to get to the third film in order for that to finally be a thing. True. Before before Eye of the Tiger, it's just gonna fly now. You know? Yeah. But finally, we get to, like, the survivor music. Yes. Like cheesy '80s music, and that's when like, I really like get on board. To a T. Yeah. If you had to pull out the one song for that time period, that would be it. Yeah. My favorite montage of all of Rocky is Rocky Four when it's like everyone was telling me I shouldn't fight this Russian, and my best friend is dead. I better get in my car, drive, and think for four minutes. Yes. That's my favorite. That's my favorite montage. While a Survivor song plays, I'm going to remember everything. Dewey Cox needs to think about his whole life before he gets on that stage. Yes. That one. And he's driving the car. That's my favorite montage. Uh. Ooh. And I can't wait for us to get to Creed 2, which is a sequel to Rocky 4. Not Creed 1? Huh? Not Creed 1? Not just Creed? No, uh, there's Rock Creed 2 has uh, Adonis Creed, the bastard son of Apollo Creed, um, fight Ivan Drago's son and uh, uh, what's his name is back who was Ivan Drago I've completely forgotten his name Dolph Lundgren yeah is back as Ivan Drago and that 
chick that Stallone was in love with for a bit is back in it. Bridget Nielsen. Okay. Is back in it. And so Creed 2 is a direct sequel to it, it, it I mean it's a direct sequel to Creed, but it's also a follow-up to Rocky 4, which is my favorite bad Rocky. Yeah. So I'm excited to get there. But you know, we we will get there. It that's in the future. Thinking back at this episode, the highs, the lows, the ups, <laughs> the downs, the young Turks. Uh Popeye. Yes. Popeye gave birth to Mario and Luigi. Fascinating. And uh, Bill Conti. I've got to say, I think this has been a, l- a bit longer. We In the last episode, we shortened the podcast. And then in this one, we elongated it. But yes, we, did. we said important things. And we talked about trans rights. And we talked about Popeye. And we talked about Bill Conti. And these are, and Frank Stallone. These are all important things. Yes, they are. And I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good, pretty good episode of the Pope on Film. I think it has been a damn good episode. Good. I am glad you said that, Bonnie. I am so glad you said that. <laughs> because I feel the same way, but I, I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction, not me. I don't want to step on any toes here. But yes, I concur <laughs> with your assessment. Good, sir. No one is running over here, but we're going to start. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lynn. And on behalf of Eleanor and Maxwell and the Tasha and Mal and everybody else in my uh, very small house. I just want to say thanks for listening and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And then Mal comes in at the side and goes and you do swaffles and poopy toots and then leaves. And then Maxwell comes and says something weird and you... And then he thinks about it for a while and he goes fish sticks or something like that. And then Eleanor shows up and says No, and you, and then you say something, and you, and you poopies. There you go. And then we do the theme song. That's from the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Wow! Cut and print. On a dookie? (laughs) What? Now the whole podcast.